Matthew 25 and verse 1. We'll start there. Let's speak it together. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be like to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose, trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. See, you can't buy somebody else's oil. You purchase it yourself. With what? Worship. Amen? <clears throat> now, and while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said to them, Surely I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. How profound this is. Now if you look deep into this, it's a very good possibility that he's saying only 50% of the body will make it on the rapture. Only 50%. Because the other ones are still not getting connected in God's presence. 50% of the body may not make the rapture. We have to look at whether we're wise or foolish. Amen? Remember, it's without God's presence, we can do nothing. Nothing. I don't care how much word you have. I don't care how much knowledge you have. Even the devil has a lot of knowledge. In fact, he knows his Bible inside and out. But he ain't going home because he can't get the Spirit. Amen? Without the presence of God, we're nothing. In 2 Timothy chapter 4. You know, one of the things that the enemy has succeeded in is removing people from the presence of God. I mean, he's probably removed more than 50% of the body right now from the presence of God. I see drive through churches still. They're still doing services online without God's presence. The Bible says, forsake not to assemble. Amen? I mean, you're going to hear me say this all the time. Because I see so many people blow it because of the lack of God's presence. In verse 1, let's speak it. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. In other words, release the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires or their own counsels, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. And fulfill your calling or ministry. In other words, he's saying release the truth. We are at a time with great delusion, great deception, and great promotion of self. As we called it the last time we gathered together, the dark side of humanity. It's being more and more exposed. It's the flesh. They're not able to maintain the counsel or correction or direction from the officers and the offices of the Lord. They're still doing their own things. Amen? In Hebrews chapter 4.
In other words, they're still being led by how they feel instead of what truth really is. Hebrews chapter 4. Hallelujah. In verse 1. You know, the word says something very powerful. So the Lord says, my sheep know my voice. They know the voice of the shepherd. Amen. And even when there are shepherds of flocks, even though there's a major shepherd, amen, but then there's shepherds. I used to get calls all the time from people saying they heard my voice because they've been listening to teaching. And if they were connected and they were one of our flock, I was their shepherd. But, of course, I'm not the full shepherd. He's the shepherd. Amen. But then they would call me and say, man, I was getting ready to do something and I heard your voice. Or this or whatever. Because God says, my sheep will hear the voice of the shepherd. What? Well, to guide, to correct, to direct. And in, in this, I used to hear when I was first young in a Lord and associated with the fellowship, I used to hear my pastor's voice. And as I began to learn the voice of the Lord more and more, and I would hear the Lord's voice or sometimes my pastor's voice. Because he was my shepherd. And then there's the true shepherd. Amen? Verse 1. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with what? Faith in those who heard it. Why was it not mixed with faith? Lack of God's presence. Amen? For we who have believed do enter that rest. Let me tell you, there's a rest in the Spirit of God, in the presence of God all the time. When you are filled with the Spirit of God, there is a rest all the time. You're resting in Him. No matter what's going on. You're leaning on Him, not on yourself. When you begin to lean on yourself more, man, everybody knows it. There's anxiousness, there's fear, there's anxiety. And people try to fight spiritually in the flesh, and you can't fight spiritually in the flesh. You must fight spiritually in the spirit. For we who believe do enter that rest, as he has said, so I swear in my wrath they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Verse 4. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this place they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains that some must enter it. And those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of what? Disobedience. Again, he designates a certain day saying in David, today after such a long time, as it has been said, today, if you will what? Hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not have afterward have spoken of another day. There remains, therefore, a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Oh, hallelujah. Let us, therefore, be diligent to enter that rest lest anyone fall according to the same example of what? Disobedience. So when there is a person in a place of disobedience, there is torment. There is no rest. Amen? The counsel, the corrections, or the directions didn't profit the individuals because of the lack of God's presence and the lack of faith. They slipped from the spirit to the flesh, then the dark side of the flesh, into the phase of reaping corruption. See, there's a place where a person will f fall, slide right into the phase of reaping corruption. And it takes a process of time because they've not sowed in the spirit. When you don't sow in the spirit, you're sowing in the flesh. And you're going to reap corruption. 
This is where the enemy has access into individuals. And what's the, power, what's the devil do? He comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. That's his job. He does it very well. And God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Like some people ain't got it yet. Matthew 7. Hallelujah. Verse 24. Oh, sorry, 21. Hallelujah. You know, think about that. 50%. That's a lot. That's half of the body of Christ. May not make the rapture. Because they were foolish. Hallelujah. Verse 21, let's speak it. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Can you do the will of the Father in the flesh? How about in the soul? No, only in the spirit. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice what? Lawlessness. What was the lack of God's presence that was affecting them? Listen, God can use a donkey. Amen? He'll use anyone. Does everybody get it? You don't have to be qualified to be used by God. <laughs> He'll use anyone and anything. He'll use a truck driving by. He'll use a bumper on a car. You know? He'll use whatever he has to do to get someone's attention. But many people think, well, I'm doing the works of God. Yes, great, but they don't. But the lack of God's presence is preventing them from walking upright. So they're still touching unclean things. They're still doing un things that are not, they're harmful to themselves in the spirit realm. Amen. In this, we've got to be careful. Just because God uses you doesn't mean you're going to make it home. I mean, that's what he just said. Many will say, God, you, God, you used me. I should be able to enter in. He's saying, no. I can use anyone. 24. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will like him a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock, which means the anointing. Amen? But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, does not follow them, does not submit to them, does not practice them, will be like a foolish man or a foolish virgin who built his house on the sand, and when the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord. That's phenomenal. Will enter the kingdom of Christ. Luke 16. Verse 19. Luke 16, 19. Is everybody there? Anybody there? Praise God. Okay. Let's speak it. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, and who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. 
The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torment in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his fingers in the water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between, you, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from these, this pass to you. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear him. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one comes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to them, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, Neither will they be persuaded through one raised from the dead. Wow. Hades, a place of torment. The teaching tonight is called Death, Hell, and the Grave. Death, Hell, and the Grave. And Revelation chapter 1. In verse 12. Revelation 1, 12. Now in the original state of creation of hell, Hades, it was created for Satan and his fallen angels. That's what its original creation was. And those who refuse to accept Jesus Christ or follow him. But its original state was created for Lucifer and the fallen angels that left their abode and left their place of position. But so many people are acting just like Lucifer and the fallen angels that they're going there too. They actually send themselves there. In Revelation 1.12, Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. In the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in furnace, and his voice is the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars out of his mouth, when a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like a sun, like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, but he laid his hand, right hand on me, saying to me, do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. I am he who was, or he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the what? The keys of Hades and death. Who has the keys? So who rules hell? Jesus, not Satan. Amen. Jesus rules hell. Verse 19, he says, Write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which shall take place after this. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. So the keys of Haiti and death. In other words, Haiti is a representation of the name of the ruler, supposedly the ruler that is in hell, but Jesus is the ruler over all things. Because he did what? He took the keys from Hades and the spirit of death. So he controls it all now. That's what he came and paid the price for. Amen? 
all under the control of Jesus now. In Matthew 16. So who controls death, hell, and the grave? Jesus. Matthew 16, verse 17. Now they were asking Jesus, who, Jesus said to him, who do, you, who do you say that I am? And in verse 17, Jesus answered and said to, said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. What's the rock mean? Anointing. And the gates of Hades shall not, what? Prevail against it. Why? Because he took the gates of, he took the keys, didn't he? Now check this out. And he says, and I will give you the what? Keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be what? Loosed in heaven. So the keys that were given, he says, look at the doorways of Hades or hell's influence will not prevail to my wise virgins. To my what? Wise virgins who hold my keys of authority in two realms, the unseen and the seen. They have dominion in both realms. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against you. In other words, the influence from the demonic forces can't penetrate you. Unless you have an open door. Or you accept them and receive them. Amen? Is everybody okay? You got to be a what? Wise virgin. Revelation 14. Revelation 14. In verse 6, then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every tri nation and tribe and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory, for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of the water. And another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. You've got to remember, Babylon is associated with the world system. Amen? That's what's running the world system right now, Babylon. Verse 9. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or his head, hand, on his forehead or his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. You got to remember something that the mark is an accursed item. Amen. It's an accursed item. It changes people's DNA. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the what? In the presence of the holy angels, in the presence of the Lamb. Where? In Hades, in hell. Does everybody understand that? They will be tormented. The Lord will watch. They'll see it. The holy angels will see it. Why? Because who's the ruler of Hades and hell and death and Jesus. Amen? And smoke and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Powerful. The mothers are tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the Lamb in hell. 
It's controlled now by Christ. Amen? Jesus defeated them when he descended into hell. In Psalm 139, But you have the keys. The thing is, is, you must use them. And that penetrating prayer book, you, you, you speak that there's keys in almost every prayer. Psalm 139 and verse 7. David wrote this psalm. It was a prayer. And he said, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are what? You're there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Even the darkness shall not what? Hide from you. Right? It, it, does everybody see that? If I surely say the darkness shall follow me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light both are alike to you. You formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance, yet being yet unformed. And in your book they are all written, the days fashioned for me when as yet there was none of them. Your spirit is everywhere. Amen. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14, verse 12. So understand that a grave is where an individual is buried. Amen. Amen. If you recall when Jesus rose from the dead, all the individuals that accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior during his ministry on earth were raised from the dead. And they walked into the city. Blew everybody's mind. You know, people thought they were dead. You know, these, well, I've been dead two years, three years, whatever it was. They were not from the old. They were those presents who accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior during his ministry. When Jesus rose from the dead, so did they. Because he is the resurrection of life, and he is life. So the grave is associated with a burial place. Amen? In verse 12, let's speak it. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cast down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. <clears throat> I will also sit on the mount of the congregation and on the farther sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. <laughs> Here's the Lord's response. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, which is also known as hell, to the lowest depths of the pit. Now the pit is known as the abyss. It is endless. It is called the abyss. The lowest depths of the pit or the abyss, which is endless. In Revelation chapter 20. So if Jesus is in control of death, hell, and the grave, he has the last say, doesn't he? Amen. In Revelation 20, verse 1. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit. The what? Bottomless pit. And a great chain in his hand. 
And they laid hold of the dragon, that is the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for 1,000 years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the 1,000 years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while, the bottomless pit. Ephesians chapter 4. But when he comes out of there, then the Lord's going to take him and the prophet and false prophet. And they will go in the lake of fire. Ephesians chapter 4. And I really believe that the lake of fire will be the Dead Sea. Because when the Lord comes to the earth... And he sets up, and the final feast will be the Feast of Tabernacles. And the word says that we will go to the tabernacle and worship the Lord, and we will walk by the lake of fire, which most likely is going to be the Dead Sea in Israel. You know, salt burns real good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4, verse 7. But each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended. What does it mean but that he also first descended where? Into the lower parts of the earth, which is known as Hades or hell. Amen. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he himself, he himself gave some to be what? Prophets, some, uh, some apostles, prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. These are officers in the body of Christ and offices. For what? The equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edification of edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure, the stature, the fullness of the anointing of Christ, that we should no longer be children, immature, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, in other words, that itchy ear stuff, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to effective working by which every part does its share, causes what? Growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Wow. He descended and then ascended. He had the victory. Amen? Praise God. Revelation 22. Death, hell, and the grave, all controlled by Jesus. Verse 12. Let's speak it. And behold, I am coming quickly. My reward is with me to give to everyone according to his works. I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs. The word dog means demonized individual. Sorcerers, sexual immoral, and murderers, idolaters, and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, 
God will add to him the plagues that were written in this book. And if anyone takes away the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from which, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He who testifies of these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Psalm 30. Hallelujah. In verse 8. What does he say? He says, I cried out to you, O Lord, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it declare your truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into what? Dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. And sing what? Sing praise to you and not be what? Silent. Why? He was carrying the presence of God through his what? Worship. Oh, Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you for what? Forever, and I'm going to close at First Peter four. Hallelujah. So make sure you maintain to be a wise virgin. Don't be a foolish virgin, or what we call a fooled virgin. Amen. Because they got fooled and tricked. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 1, I believe. Yes. Let's speak it together, please. Is everybody okay? Give a little understanding of what's shaken. Satan does not rule hell. Amen. I mean, everybody's been believing that for so many time, for so many years. Satan's going to send you to hell. He can't send nobody nowhere. <laughs> Hallelujah. My dad owns hell. <laughs> and people send themselves there. He doesn't need to. Foolish virgins. Verse 1. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the loss of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these things, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will what? Give an account to him who was ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel is preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Now wait, who preached to the dead? Jesus, when he went to Hades. Amen? When he went to hell, he opened up. He opened up their gates. But the end of all things is what? At hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. You know, there's a time when people do things for their families. Well, I'm doing this for my child. I'm doing this for my family. I'm doing this for my wife. I'm doing this for my husband. Listen, you got to get beyond that and do it for you. Because if you're doing it for someone else, you won't make it. You may start that way, but it's got to turn quickly. You must do it for you. Why? So you can get a relationship. That's what it's about. Amen? Because if you're doing it for someone else, you won't make it. You do it for you, and then as you mature, you do it for him. Does everybody understand that? So many people can't get it to that place where they're doing it for him right away. So they're doing whatever it takes until that connection comes 
Remember, discipline will lead to relationship and love affair if you're consistent. Amen? Again, the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for the love will, co love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another. Without what? Grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let them speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let them do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Praise God. Death, hell, and the grave. It's controlled by Jesus. Amen. One of the things we don't want to do is fall in the hands of the wrath of God. We want to avoid it in every area. So do whatever it takes, but build a relationship. Worship. Those who seek him with all their heart, their mind, their strength, their will, find him. If you're waiting for a visitation from the Lord and a touch from the Lord, you must sow it and reach a place where it's released to you. Amen? Don't give up. Don't get weary. Don't get disappointed, even though when it comes, don't accept it. Amen. Everybody goes through a phase of something's going on. We all want to be perfect. It's vanity, but we'll get through it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed for the release of your word tonight. And we ask that you protect the seeds that have been imparted and I pray, God, that you bring the fear of the Lord in each and every one. For your glory, for your honor, and for your praise. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen.